<laughs> What's up, game members? It's the Jizz, and in today's video, we are going to be revealing the 11 best AD carries of the new patch 11.5. Seeing as we haven't focused too much on the bot lane in the last week or so, I thought I'd show you Marksman some love and fill you in on which champions you have to play in just a few days' time. And in this next patch, guys, there are some buffs and nerfs to AD carries and their items, so this is definitely a video you don't want to miss. Now, what you also don't want to miss, guys, is the next video with the same pro guides ad with that guy saying, nah, dude, you're pro. So make sure you hit that sub button and that bell, and make sure to check out the Game Week website for exclusive Summoners Rift content that is guaranteed to help you improve and achieve your goals in Season 11. Links, as always, in the description and comment section. All right, let's get into it, guys. And starting off the countdown, we have a champion who has been buffed a lot recently and has improved as a result to the point where you can actually put in work and potentially carry games. So number 11, guys, is Caitlyn, and after copying it as much as Rito's balance team in the preseason when crit got nerfed into the ground, Caitlyn was struggling. You hit nowhere near as hard as the best AD carries on the Rift, but in patch 11.2 and 11.4, buffs to your attack speed and attack damage have pushed you back into contention. Now, I'm not saying Kate is OP, don't mistake the jizz, but you can bully lanes again and get a sizable lead so that when that damage does come flying at you, you have the tools and damage to fight back. In fact, Kate has improved that much, guys, this patch that her win rate has gone up over 1.5%. Now, the only problem is, yes, you died to pretty much everything in the game at the moment. If you get hit by one form of CC, yeah, you're dead. And even if you do play a fight perfectly, yeah, you're still probably dead. With Uders and Hecarims flying at you, it's very hard to stay alive and be relevant, but in terms of the bot lane, you are still one of the strongest laners. Just remember to play at that 650 range. Now, just ahead of Caitlyn, guys, we have another strong laner who brings more to team fights and can actually hard carry games because of her amazing ultimate. So if you pick Ash, guys, you can legit solo carry. In lane, you can outtrade pretty much every AD carry because you've your volley and auto attack reset in your queue, and when level 6 comes around, we all know about that big crystal arrow of yours. You also have the choice of 3 mythic items, which is a huge advantage because no game is the same. So if you're snowballing, you want damage and are against a tankier team, Kraken Slayer it is. If you're against a lot of bursts and assassins, Shield Bow will come in handy, and then if you want to run it down, you can get a Gale Force and Cloud Burst it down that mid lane. But guys, there is one item that has helped you out enormously. So when Riot buff Phantom Dancer in 11-3 to give it more AD, and you now need only 4 stacks to trigger its passive, it became the best second item on Ash, and still is. It gives you that extra kite and survivability you need, especially this season because ADCs are so fragile. You can still go Runan's Hurricane, of course, into melee team compositions, but PD is where it's at on Ash. Now, coming in hot at number 9, guys, is another champion, like Caitlyn, who Riot have buffed in the last couple of patches, and this has seen her go from kind of trash tier to actually decent and more than playable. So in 11.3 and 11.4, guys, Riot buffed Jinx to the point where her win rate increased almost 2%, and overall, it's now 51%, which surprisingly makes her a top 5 ADC based on that WR. But is it surprising? Your rocket's attack range increased and the attack speed loss when you switch it up decreased 60%. So in the laning phase, you can harass way easier and bully your opponents. And perhaps most importantly, you are now safer. On top of that, the fact your flame chompers activate faster and cost less mana to throw out mean you can use these way more offensively than before to set up kills and back up engages from your teammates. The damage you deal, guys, as well with Kraken Slayer, Rune Arms, and Infinity Edge is up there with the best of them, so if you're a fan of pink hair and tats, pick up Jinx in 11.5. Now up next, I'm excited about this one because this AD carry has the highest win rate across the board out of all the AD carries. So Jizz, why is Sivir only 8th on this countdown? Well, mate, that's a great question. You see, Sivir is a very good AD carry. She's got the best wave clear in the game, has good poke, is great in teamfights because of her ultimate. It's just that there are other marksmen who hit a bit harder and spike a little earlier. Sivir, a bit like Jinx, is also always going to be one of the best late game marksmen in the game, but most games are decided by that point. So even if you do get to three items, let's say you have already lost all three inhibs and both Nexus turrets. So if you still want to play Sivir guys, I have one build that is going to give you way more of a spike in that early mid game. So if your team is behind, you can hard carry them. So here we go. Muro Mana, Dustblade, and if the enemy team has no armor, the Collector, if they do have armor, Cyrilda's Grudge. The point of this build, guys, is to Q spam and play around your ability haste. Auto attacks matter less, so don't be one of those ADCs trying to sniff your opponent's cologne. Now, what's great about this, guys, is that Mirror Mana is getting a giga buff next patch. Your autos may deal less, but your abilities will deal way more damage. So this play style and setup around your Q becomes super, super strong. So make sure you try it out in a few days' time. Now, coming in at number 7, guys, just ahead of Civil, we have one of the most broken AD carries of 11.4, and unfortunately, she and her OP item are on the chopping block. So for Senna, guys, Guys, you'll still be strong, but nowhere near as broken as you are right now, which might be a good thing. You're going to be able to play her more because she'll be more balanced, and less players will ban her and actually pick her. So what these nerfs mean are this essentially. On hit Senna is less effective, and this is what's behind Senna's rapid increase in play rate and abuse rate recently. So with Kraken Slayer and Ginsu's, the on hit damage is through the roof, and though this will be a 
somewhat strong two item spike in 11.5, it will be nowhere near as oppressive as it is right now. Now the issue here though guys is that Senna is a scaling champion, so the more passive stacks and items you buy, the stronger you become, but the new critical strike cap and less on hit damage take away some of this late game power. This as a result brings Infinity Edge Senna back into play, or maybe you just build a rage knife and sell this for IE later, and maybe you even start incorporating the buff Mura mana in there somewhere as well. You'll have to let me know what you're thinking in the comments guys, and that's not just for Senna, leave any of your thoughts on any of the picks or upcoming changes in the comments. Okay, number 6 on the countdown guys is another one I'm excited about because I swear Ryder buffing Mura mana specifically for this champion who isn't the best AD carry at the moment, but next patch will be right back in the mix. So if you're a fan of Ezreal guys, and we have an updated Season 11 guide on mastering the Prodigal Explorer, so make sure you check that out, you are in luck. So as I explained with Sivir, your auto attacks with the new Mura mana may tickle the enemy team, but your mystic shots are going to be off chops. And let me just tell you the broken build you have to abuse next patch. So Mura mana, Dustblade, Ravenous Hydra, and then Cyrilda's Grudge. Now you can go Essence Reaver, it's just that it's a bit overkill in the mana sustain department, so it makes less sense to buy a tier. But still, with Dustblade as your mythic, you get Ability Haste as your mythic passive, and at 3 or 4 items deep, your Q will be spammable 24-7. And this isn't me exaggerating, and hopefully some of you have seen this already. When your Q hits a target, it is no joke up again almost immediately. So imagine this with the extra mirror mana damage in 11-5. The enemy team will be shocked. Do you guys get it? Because mirror mana's passive is called shock. Alright, let's quickly move on from the cringe. We are now into the top 5 AD carries, guys, of 11-5. And kicking it off, we have a champion who has played nowhere near enough in that bot lane at the moment. Now in higher elo, she is making a lot of noise as a mid laner, but as a bot laner, she has one of the highest rates in every single elo. Bronze, silver, gold, platinum, diamond, you name it. So you'd be very smart to pick Tristana in 11-5. Now think of all the popular supports at the moment. You've got Thresh, you've got Leona, you've got Rel. Now how good are any of these with Tristana? Like if any bit of CC lands, you can rocket jump in and E midair, and that target if they don't have flash is 100% dead. Now perhaps the biggest advantage you have as Triss is that you can fend for yourself. You don't need your support to do nearly as much work because you can engage on your own and disengage on your own, and this is where other AD carries on this list really struggle. Now it's essential to use your abilities in harmony with one another guys because you are an all in AD carry. You're not like a Senna who is spamming her Q in lane or an Ash spamming her W. When you go in, you go in full throttle. There's no turning back. Just make sure to hold on to your W if you think you're about to get murked. Now if you want to turn that around and be the one doing the murking, there is a champion slightly more effective at doing so than Dristana and this AD carry used to be the best AD carry at the start of season 11. But after nerfing her Q in 11-4, Kaiser has dropped off but she's still one of the premier marksmen you can choose from like little has changed here. So your Q's base damage and isolation are down, but seriously, has anyone even noticed a difference here? Now the reason Kaiser is so good right now is because she isn't really an AD carry. She's more of an assassin and that's the thing. Traditional ADCs like Ash and Jinx need help to get to their power spikes and impact a game. Kaiser on the other hand, doesn't. You have the tools in your kit, a bit like Tristana, to find kills on your own and 1v9 a game. You have a long range gap closer in your R, you have invisibility and attack speed steroid in your E, and you still have ridiculous isolation damage in your Q, not to mention Hail of Blades which adds to that nutty burst damage. Even other assassins like Karzik, Shaco, or Akali struggle because your W grants true sight so you can see them in stealth. Now guys, if you're snowballing and just want raw damage, build a Kraken Slayer as your mythic into the collector, then rune on Hurricane. If you need a bit more mobility and self peel, get Gale Force instead. Kaiser remains as one of the top ADCs in 11.5 guys, so keep picking her. Now speaking of something you have to start picking, I know it's not your nose, it's the Game Week website. Aren't you guys tired of recycled content other sites put up for their subscribers. So if you want original, fresh, up-to-date, informative courses, guides, and videos, then all you have to do is click on one of the links below and get signed up. The jizz is waiting. All right, the top three AD carries of 11.5, guys, and this champion like Kaiser has been one of the top ADCs in season 11, and 11.5 is no different. So if you want to tell your teammates that you hit your opponents hard, Misfortune is the champ to do it on. Now, one big item buff that will help you out into bursty AP teams, for instance, Arkali, Elise, Diana, these major assassins, it's more of Malmordius. The lifeline passive, the magic resist, and the AD are all good, but but what makes it great is that it's now 300 gold cheaper and you still get the same stats. Now the key to dealing the most damage in the game is the build guys and make sure you buy Gale Force as your mythic item, the collector next and then Infinity Edge. Gale Force gives you the kite and dash you don't have so you can escape sticky situations, the collector gives you lethality so your abilities delete squishy enemies and Infinity Edge gives you extra damage on your crits which works with your Q and ultimate. Like I said with Tristana if your support is Leona, Alistair, Rel, you are the deadliest combo out of any
any possible combination of champions because the hard CC followed by your bullet time, nothing can beat it. Strong in lane and I will be the best team fighting marksman. You cannot go wrong with 11-5 MF guys. Now just ahead of MF by the tiniest of margins, and those I certainly know about, is a champion of the same ilk. So if you want another AD carry who deals a ton of damage with their abilities and not just their auto attacks, then Jin is the other option in 11-5. With more of Malmordius buffed and all your damage still being there, you will continue to dominate lane in the game on the Virtuoso. Now if you take Dark Harvest as your keystone, guys you will be dropping 10 plus skills every single game. That's unless you forget you're a ranged champion. Now the damage you can do is nuts still. With Gale Force and maybe a bit of lethality in there, you can GF into an enemy squishy with your 4 shot and watch them go boom. You can also Gale Force into a W, into an ultimate, to dodge a skill shot like an Aurelia ultimate, lots of uses there. Now get the collector after that GF and then an infinity edge and guys, thank me later. Now the number 1 AD carry of 11.5 guys, here we go. I'm going to throw some clues and reasons how you as per usual and you have to guess who this champion is. That's if you haven't already sniffed out some timestamps in the comments. You would think I'm a swimmer if you just looked at my head. Now on the rift I have the highest DPS in the game and if you think you can escape me, well, you can't because I get movement speed when I'm chasing my foe. My early game is a little weakish but my Kraken Slayer spike is the scariest out of anyone in the infamous bot lane. The 11.3 PD buff which is now my go to second item has given me even more damage and this is going nowhere in 11.5. And finally I don't have to rely on my team to 1v5, thank god. I can flank, I can kite, I can peel, I can even go invisible when I queue, nothing can stop me. So the best AD carry of 11.5 guys and congratulations if you got it is Vayne. Thanks so much for watching guys, leave a like before leaving, this has been Coach Eason until tomorrow's video.